every single year. Our youth are full of doubts. And that is Muslim youth leaving Islam. 24% of Muslim youth are leaving Islam. Your child is about to become apostate. Your child is about to become apostate. In America, this is the last thing, 23% are becoming apostates of Muslims, American-born Muslims. Well, like... so one of the more shocking things that I have experienced over the course of those years is are the number of young boys and girls aged between 13 to 18 who have openly declared their apostasy to me. I don't believe that the Quran is a book of revelation. It is happening. It is happening continuously. It is going to become an avalanche, a tsunami that is going to hit our community in such a way that we will have a very difficult time standing. It will knock us over. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Today our topic is about Islam without lies dies. You know, always you need to ask yourself a very simple question. If somebody have a belief and he believe in his belief, why he need to lie about his belief unless he don't believe in what he believe? <laughs> it sounds like Al-Kafirun chapter. If I am a believer, why I need to compromise and lie about my belief? Is it this is a clear evidence that the person who is speaking is not a believer? Because when you lie to cover a belief, obviously you yourself agree that your belief is, you know, <laughs> uh, like uh, junk. So why anyone would lie about his belief? We have uh, the tomato sauce guy. Uh, I don't really watch his videos. But, uh, you know, this guy, anyone who speak to him, by the way, he call him Christian preacher. Anyone, you go there, he, it, this is how he can attract the, the ants, you know. And the Muslim, they don't ask themselves, hold, hold on. A Christian preacher, he don't believe that no exists. exist. <laughs> a Christian preacher, he don't believe in the book of Genesis. <laughs> but he put a Christian preacher for anything, anyone who get close to him, if it's a, even if it's a cat. So he can get the support of the Muhammadan, the same as the tomato sauce. So here we see uh, uh, the Bachabazi boy is uh, debating a Christian preacher who don't believe in Jesus. <laughs> who don't believe in Noah, who don't believe in Adam. <laughs> and how in the world he got with the title of a Christian preacher, we do not know. But anyway, this is how the fool, you know, they come and they swarm over his channel. But just to show you Muslims, why Islam stink. If this guy is a believer, and you are a believer, and Muhammad is a true prophet, then you should not lie to cover what you believe, it's a mistake. The argument here in this video, I cannot play it all, but you can go to his channel, you know, I don't encourage people to go to any one channel, but uh, to Muslim channel, but just for the sake of uh, proving the point. Debate the Quran, Bible, flood of Noah. I say to the Muta boy, in, in case you want to debate about the flood of Noah, what about you give me your Skype and let us see people would die laughing at you. Uh, let us hear a little bit of what this guy, both they are saying. I agree with they you. won't try to refute it because you can't refute it. I will agree with you that the story in Genesis and the dates that are given to it are wrong. Okay? But let me now explain. Uh, if something else you want to say, I want to humbly listen first. Oh, okay. Okay. So in the Quran, we do not give it a date. 5,000 year, 10,000 year, 100,000 year, we don't know. We do not know. 
This is the argument. The guy is saying to him in science, they say millions of years, the earth is an age. And the guy, he says the date in Genesis is absolutely false. So he agree with the guy, and you can watch the whole video if you want and love. And he agree uh, in his understanding that the date in Genesis is wrong. Why? Because that will not make it many thousand of years. The guy is speaking about millions. Let us get him busted without delay. Let us go actually to serious scholars, not the scumbag like this guy, but Shabazi boy. This is the book of At Tabaqat al Kubra, Muhammad ibn Sa'd, volume number one. Page number 53. And by the way, this guy himself, he used the reference from this book, so he cannot deny it. It says here, and I will use the Google translation, from Ibn Abbas, you know, Ibn Abbas is the cousin of Muhammad. All the reference go back to Ibn Abbas. Here it's coming from an uh, Ikrama, but we will show you about Ibn Abbas in a second. So here it says that the years between Adam and Noah is 10th century, and all of them are Muslims. And then he continued. The distance or the, the, the timeline between Adam and Noah is 10th centuries, and the century is a hundred years. And the distance between Noah and Abraham is 10 centuries, and the century is 100 years. And the distance between Abraham and Moses, the, the son of Amran, <laughs> this is the same father of Jesus, by the way. <laughs> so, and the distance between Abraham and Moses, the son of Amran, is 1,000 years. And the Muhammad is stuck with 1,000 years, that's it. Everything is, you know. And, and again, and the, uh, and the Quran is 100, uh, the century is 100 years. And it says here, uh, from Ibn Abbas, the distance between Moses, the son of Amran, and Isa is 1,000 years, 1,900 years. And then he continues saying, and the distance between the birth of Isa and Muhammad is 596 years. So how this coward, he say, we do not know. Let us use Google Translation, and I will give you the reference too. I will shorten the link and give it to you. Never trust sons of Mutaz. Translate in the front of your eyes. I'm not translating, you know, you see, this is Google. Eh, it's a blind, like a blind date of Muhammad with, with Aisha. Uh, it says here, he mentioned the centuries uh, and years between Adam and Muhammad. Peace be upon him. So now we knew <laughs> how long it is between Adam all the way to Muhammad. The Muhammadan, they claim we did the Quran nowhere, nowhere. In Islam, we don't know. Nowhere it mentioned, brother. Nowhere. In the same video, by the way, he said in Islam, not only in the Quran. If you watch the video, he would say in Islam. So he make it clear that in Islam, there is nowhere. It says, what is, how many years between Adam all the way to Muhammad? And this is the reference here. Now the translation here in English for the name of the book is coming like English translation, it says At-Tabaqat Al-Kubra Al-Tabaqat Al-Kubra uh, So you have, you have uh, let, us, let me type it for you so you can, you can learn how to pronounce it Al-Tabaqat Al-Kubra All right, this is how it's going to come to you in, in, in the Arabic name. By Muhammad ibn Sa'ad, big, big, big scholar. I mean, this guy, uh, tomato sauce, his testicles is nothing compared to this guy, compared to Islam. You know, this guy is not even, he don't have high school. 
value number one, page number 53. What is the distance between Prophet Muhammad and Adam? This is the, this is the topic. All what we need to do now, we calculate the numbers. And we will be able to find out what is the total. Maybe some of you can help me. In calculating, I think it's very simple. The distance between Adam and Noah is 10th century. So please put 1,000 down. Put 1,000 down. Actually, let me, let me write it here on the screen. So between Noah and Adam is 1,000 years. We will type Noah versus Adam. How many years? 1,000 years. All right. Now we continue. And then uh, the distance uh, between Adam and Noah is 10 century, confirm again. And the century is a 100 years, so the Muslim they cannot play games with that. They might, make, might say to you, oh, century is not the same, you know. And then Adam and Noah, okay, 10 years, 10, uh, 10 hundred uh, years. And between Noah and Abraham are 10 centuries, and the century is a 100 year. Wonderful. So now between Noah and Abraham is another 1,000. Uh, Noah to Abraham. Adam is A, Abraham is Abra uh, AB. We, we make a simple for it. All right. So now we have total of 2,000. Let us continue. You see, Uthman ibn Farouk, how we get you busted, you are just a scumbag. And then the distance. And by the way, this coward, he flagged my videos. If you use any of his videos, he will flag it. That's why I'm playing a very short part, because he is a coward and he is not a man. I will never fly, flag any Muslim using my video. <laughs> Son of Muta. So we continue. And then the distance, this, now we have the distance between Noah and Abraham is 10 centuries, wonderful. Okay, and the century is 100 years. So it's confirmed even what the century is. So the Muslim cannot say, oh, at that time, century was a million year. <laughs> you never know, they will do it. And actually, they did. They will, I will show you later about, about the six days. How Allah created the, the, the earth and the heaven in six days. Zakir Naik, he says, When Allah he said thick deed, he don't mean thick deed. He means thick period. <laughs> what a scumbag. So now we confirm the distance between Abraham and Noah. And now, what is the distance between Abraham and Moses? Ibn Amran is 10 centuries. Oh boy, okay. We are stuck with number 10, 10 centuries. So now, we have one, one more 1,000 year. And this time between Abraham <laughs> A.B. Abraham and Moses. All right, I think now it's, it's getting easier. <laughs> All right, so now we have total 3,000 years, and, and now we arrive to Moses, remember that. Uh, and then uh, we continue. <laughs> and then, okay, so the distance between Abraham and Musa's Ibn Amran is 10 centuries, and the century is 100 years. And then we have, uh, here it says, uh, 
and the distance between Musa, the son of Omaran, and the Isa, which means Jesus, is 900 years, 900, uh, sorry, uh, uh, 1,900 years. And between them, there was no prophets, according to the story here. So, 900, uh, 1,000, and the translation here is not coming correct. If you go in the Arabic, it says here, let me go in the Arabic page, <clears throat> because you might conf be confused about the English translation is not coming right. Here it says, and the distance between Moses and Isa, the son of Maryam, is 1,900 years, and there was no uh, uh, sorry, there is no, uh, there is no like uh, pause between between them. Which means Allah He sent many prophet, and Allah He sent between them one thousand messenger to the children of Israel. Beside the other messengers He sent to other nations. Okay, so now we have one thousand year, one thousand nine hundred years between Isa or Jesus, the Muslim Isa. And Moses. So one thousand, oh, one thousand nine hundred years between Moses and Jesus. So are we going? Are we getting the, our numbers now? What is left is very easy, and then he says, and the distance between Muhammad and Isa is five hundred ninety-nine years. Do you see it? So let us write here. 500 between Jesus. Oops. 500, 99 years. Between Jesus and Muhammad. And remember, those are Muslim numbers. We have nothing to do with them. We don't approve. You know, this is what they say. Uh, uh, Muslim, they try to copy from the Old Testament, as we know, but always they fail with their stupidity and their ignorance. So, 599 years between Isa and Muhammad. So, this is Jesus versus Muhammad. Mumu. Now we know the number. Why the son of Muta, he said in Islam, we don't have any numbers and we don't agree about those numbers. And he agreed with science about millions of years of the age of the earth. Why he don't, isn't he a sheikh? We have the total number, as you see. It is an act of cowardness. It's an act of deception. It's an act of Satan. There's no reason for somebody, you know, if somebody come to me and says the earth is a billion trillion years, and my Bible say no, which one I will believe? I am a believer, I will say the Bible, who cares? I'm not going to compromise with their stupid science. I'm a true believer. But because Islam is based on deception, because Islam is satanic, then all deception is lawful.
Muslims, do we have the numbers or not? As you see in front of me, from the time of Muhammad to the time of Jesus is 4,900 years. Why the Muslims are lying? See, 5,000, sorry. Uh, let me, hold on, let me correct it. Uh, yeah, hold on. Yeah. Sorry for that. Let me type it in the screen. Five thousand four hundred ninety-nine total. Scam. You know what scam is about? This is what it's called official scam. What's wrong with my typer? Let me take it off. My, my software is not working. Let's hold on. Let me exit. But if I exit, I will lose everything. Hold on. Uh, you know, the circle of death, when it happened in the computer. Okay. Well, now it's working. All right. So the total is 4, 5,499. The Mohammedan boy, he said, I do not know. And let me shorten the link for you. And I will post it for everybody. Let us take a screenshot. Because we have to delete. Islam literally is a scam and you cannot trust anyone he claimed to be a Muslim you know when you speak to somebody from a religious group doesn't matter what religious group you assume honesty as somebody grew in beard he prayed to his God so what you think you think well this guy he must be a decent person come on he is a believer he fear he fear God he will not lie they will not lie to us but reality is the Islam is based on lying, you know? Muhammad, he allowed him to lie. It's called taqiyya. In order to defend Islam, they can lie. They are allowed even to lie to their wife and their husband. Let us shorten the link. And here we go. And this is the link for your reference. Please don't flood the chat with the stupid uh, uh, icons, otherwise we will block you. And the admin, uh, Lisa, I didn't see her, so we can fix. Uh, last time she was removed from the admin by mistake. She need to take something so I can fix her, add her as an admin. Don't flood the text with with the with pictures. That's mean you are just a kid. We are here adult, speaking to adult. Go to you know go to cartoon movie and play your mojo. So listen here now. 
Here we go, another idiot. Don't post 100 mojo. Bunch of kids. Grow up. Don't be Muhammadan. I just posted the link for those who care, and I know not many of you care, because many of you are a bunch of kids, as I can tell. So do you see how they lie about everything in order to cover the lies of their religion? Why anyone may believe in, in, in God? I mean, okay, this is your, your book saying, if you are ashamed of it, obviously you are not a believer. If a person is ashamed of his religion, and he's trying to cover a mistake in his religion, as he believed, because now he believed that this is a mistake. It's not a few thousand of years between the beginning of time and now. Somebody saying, you don't want a mojo? I mean, look at the smart people, man. No wonder there's a person he convert to Islam. Do you, you don't want a mojo? You know, you can use a mojo if it make you happy, but don't make the holy chat a mojo. Weirdo. And this is not the only reference. We have endless reference. We have even the lineage of Muhammad, according to Muhammad, and all the way to Adam. So how the Muhammad and they claim that we do not know? And now let us imagine the response of potato, tomato sauce, Uthman. He will say this hadith is da'if. I don't agree with it, okay? This is the opinion of a scholar. Well, are, are you a scholar? So how you can give your opinion? <laughs> this is a scholar, a big scholar. Who are you? A tomato sauce boy? Do you see how they lie? Now we continue. Let us see another idiot. Because all of them, when it comes to the date, they try to play games in order to cover. We will go to the front idiot. This time, Zachar Naik. And remember, anyone who tried to cover up mistakes in his belief, or what he believes, it's not fit with science, and that's why he's trying to cover it up, Obviously, he believes in science, he don't believe in his book. Listen carefully. <laughs> that the scientists, they tell us that the Big Bang is a process which has taken millions of years for the formation of the universe. But the Quran says that Allah has created the heaven and the earth in six days. So isn't it contradicting to science? There are various places in which Allah says in the Quran that Allah has created the heaven and the earth in six days. Allah says in the Quran. Here you notice that Zakir Naik, he don't memorize the Quran in fact. He is waiting for something in the screen. And his Bluetooth is not working. He's telling the guy, flip the screen, man. Did you notice? Listen carefully. Watch. Allah says in the Quran Allah created the heaven and the earth in six days Allah says in the Quran Allah has created the heaven and the earth in six days.
Mm. This is mentioned several places in the Quran. It's mentioned in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 54. In Surah Yunus, chapter number 10, verse number 3. In Surah Hud, chapter number 11, verse number 7. In Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, <laughs> verse number 59. Uh. In Surah Sajda, chapter number 32, verse number 4. Mm. In Bluetooth is not Surah working. Kof, chapter number 50, verse number 38. Mm. It's also mentioned in Surah Hadith, chapter number 57, verse number 4. In several places, Allah says, خَلَقَ samawati wal ard fi sitati ayam. That it is He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has created the, the heavens and the earth in six days. Mm. <coughs> the Arabic word used in the Quran is ayam. ayam uh -huh. It's a plural of the word yom. Uh -huh. Yom, one of its meaning is day. Uh -huh. But the other meaning of yom is also a period, an epoch. So here when Allah says Allah has created <coughs> the heavens and the earth in six ayam, it actually refers to six period, six epochs. See? So scientists today have no problem with the Quranic narration that the heavens and the earth were created in six long periods. <laughs> so six days, it's not six days, brother. It's a long, long period. Okay, how long? Those scientists, they are talking about billions of years, you potato. Let us get the Abdul busted. We go to Muhammad. Muhammad is a nice prophet who don't keep his inner shut. I mean his mouth. So look what he said. Brother, when the Quran says the word day, he don't mean day, brother. <laughs> he mean long period. I don't know if you are talking about your life period or something else, because obviously it was long. This is your stupid prophet, and this is a very authentic hadith. And this is Sahih Muslim. What you will say, it's a weak hadith? Allah the exalted, the glorious, created the clay on Saturday. And then he created the mountains on Sunday. And he created the trees on Monday. And he created the things in time and labor on Tuesday. And he created the light in Wednesday. And by the way, if you remember, I made a video before, if you want to insert it, if you are making editing for the video, you can go to the that who is making fun of the Bible in his debate with the Christian minister. <laughs> Your God, he created the, the sun in Wednesday? <laughs> the stupid did that do not know that everything the Muslims they have is a copy of somebody else. Everything they have. From the Quran to the stories of Moses, there's any any story it is a copy of somebody else so when this liar he say well the quran when the quran says days he don't mean days why muslim don't say to him shame on you which scholar agree with zakura who do not know how to write his prophet name in arabic How those people even, they become, they call themselves scholars. Anyone have an idea? Which interpretation you Muslims agree to go to, and then we will see that this is absolutely false. And not only that, you will see here it says, Allah, he created Adam after noon in Friday. Look, after noon in Friday was a three billion years. Do you see it says here, Asr? Asr is afternoon. And Allah was late. He keep working in Adam until the last hour of a Friday. Actually, there's a verse in the Quran, it says, وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولَ And the human being was ever hasty, which means he's in a rush. What does that mean? Stupid statement. Ah, no, it's not stupid. Muhammad, you have a story behind it. Muhammad, he claimed that when Allah was creating Adam, Adam was worried that Allah will not be able to finish him before the sunset. So he said, finish me Allah before the sunset. Chapter 11, chapter 17, verse number 11.
And as you see, we don't do what those Abdul they do. We show them their books, their own books. What they will do now, they will wash their butt with it. Uh, actually, let us go to Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir is better. Ibn Kathir, he gives us more details. <laughs> Imagine you are not created yet, and you are telling God to finish you first, fast. I mean, have you ever heard of such a stu stupid story? A person, his name is Adam, he is asking Allah, oh, come on. You are so slow, man. I mean, don't you see the sun is going to set? And now don't ask yourself how in the world Adam, he is not finished yet and he knew the sun set. How he knew about the sunset? And look like Allah, he cannot work in dark. He's not like the American army. They have a, a night vision. Look, this is Ibn Kathir. And man is ever hasty. Salman al-Farisi said, from Ibn Abbas, he mentioned the story of Adam, when he wanted to get up before his soul reached his feet, when his soul was breathed into him, it entered his body from his head downward. When it reached his brain, his, his knees, hachoo! And he said, Alhamdulillah, the Arabic was exist in the time of Adam. Adam, he born to speak Arabic, that's it. Praise be to Allah, Alhamdulillah, it doesn't mean praise to be Allah, the donkey who translated is an idiot. Alhamdulillah means thanks to Allah. And, and Allah said, may your Lord have mercy on you, Allah. He is asking other Allah to have mercy on him. Aren't you Allah? Eh, drunk. Oh, Adam, he, he gave him a name. How Adam, he knew that he's, he's Adam. How Adam, he knew he's talking to him. Shouldn't Allah tell him, your name is Adam now? Anyway. When it reached his eyes, he opened them. And when it reached his body and the limp, he started to stare at them in wonder. Like, what the heck is that? This is my feet? Oh, wow. Mean, and then he wanted to get up before his re his, his uh, uh, before his, his soul reach his feet, but he could not, brother. How sad! He said, "Oh Allah, make it happen before the night comes." I mean, you see here the stupidity and how how naive the story. A person is not even finished. He's talking, and he is speaking Arabic, and he knew the sunset, and he is saying Allah to finish him fast. And the Muslim, they say in the Quran, if Allah wants something to happen, he said to him, it's B, and he was. Do you see it? So the Muhammadan, in order to make anything in Islam look scientific, they compromise and they lie. They compromise and they lie. We Christian, we don't believe in their Big Bang. We don't. It's a theory, you stupid idiot. Even the Muslims, they adopt the atheist belief on the existence of the earth. This is how deceiving they are. Why? Because the currency these days between the new generation is science. So how we can convince kids to join Islam? We say to them, oh, the Quran speak about the Big Bang. This is the same Abdul. The Quran described the creation of the universe, the Big Bang 1400 years ago. In the field of astronomy, in 1973, there were a couple of scientists who got the Nobel Prize. And these couple of scientists, they described the creation of the universe. And they called it the Big Bang. And they said that initially, our universe, it was a primary nebula. Then there was a Big Bang. There was a secondary separation which gave rise to galaxies, the stars, the planets, the sun, the moon, and the earth on which we live. This they called as the Big Bang. The glorious Quran 
mentions this in a nutshell 1400 years ago in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, the ayah I started my talk with. And it says, Avalam yara lazina kafiru. Do not the unbelievers see. Anna samawati wal arda that the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. Here you see the stupidity of those Muhammadan who they are desperate to find their God in the books of science. Look what, what he just said. That the heavens and the earth were joined together. See. Do not the unbelievers 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 see. So you donkey, the Quran is speaking about something they see. Did we see the Big Bang? Do you see the stupidity of this cult? And if we go to the verse in the Quran, we will find the Quran saying totally the opposite. Here we go. And by the way, they don't speak Arabic. Those people, they recite Quran, but they don't speak Arabic. This is the Muhammadan translation. Don't the unbelievers see? Okay. But we don't see the Big Bang, and nobody saw it. So Muhammad is speaking to people in his time. Telling them, don't you see? Obviously, they are looking at what? They are looking at the sky, and the stupid Muhammad, he think that the sky and the earth, they are separated. But we are not. What the stupid Muhammad, he told them in the Quran, that the sky was down in the earth, and Allah, he lift up the sky. Let us see that. And he put the sky in the top of column, which we cannot see. Chapter 13, verse number 2. Allah is he who raised the heaven without any pillars that you can see. Do you see it? So what the Quran is saying, that the sky was down in the earth, and then Allah, he made it up. How? What he made of it? He made it a roof. How we prove that? We go to the Quran too. And we have made the heaven a roof, safe, well guarded. Now here the Muslim, they will say to you, oh, this is the atmosphere, potato. It is the opposite. The Quran claim that nobody can go out of the earth to the heaven, and that is the roof. Not the opposite, nobody can come down from heaven to the earth. How we prove that? We go to different verse in the Quran. Are we getting dizzy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> According to the to the to Muhammad, Shaitan and Genie they try to go out of the earth to spy at Allah. Allah will shoot at their butt with stars. Read with me carefully. This is science, brother. This is pure science. The God of Islam He challenged all mankind and genie to go out beyond the zone of the heaven and the earth. You cannot pass unless Allah give you permission. We ask Muhammad, who is the one who gets permission? He says, people like me, prophets, you cannot. So it's a challenge for all mankind. And all of us, we knew that the first one who went up to the sky, to the space, it was the communist. It's not even a Christians. They are not even a believers. They are pure communists who hate God, who hate religion. So Allah challenging the genie to go out of the heaven. And then he says, and if you try to go, I will shoot your anus with smoke less fire and copper. Do you see it? So this is what it's meant. Don't you see the sky and the earth used to be one and Allah, he raised up the sky. 
he split them. But as you know, you know, I mean, you do not need to be a genius to know if you go to school for a few years, you know, that we are not separated from the space. We are inside the space. We are not even a piece of dust in this massive universe. So how we are separated, we are not separated. We are inside the space. According to the Quran, the earth is a flat, the sky is the top of the earth. And it's a roof. If you remember the verse before it, it says, without any column that you can see. Does that mean there's a column or not? Yes, there's columns. How we can prove that? We go and read the interpretation. This is a chapter uh, 21, verse number 30. Remember the Abdul, after all the reference we show in the screen, they will say he's lying. Abdul, I'm showing you your own books. Those are your own teachers. He's lying, brother. Abdul, it's not me who's talking. I'm reading your, your, your books. He's lying, brother. What the heck? So this is the chapter of 21, verse number 30. And then let us go to the other chapter. Uh, here, let us hold. Yeah, we go to chapter 13, verse number uh, 2. 13. This is the most you know interpretation. This is a Jalalain. If you don't like a Jalalain, we go to Ibn Abbas. If you don't like Ibn Abbas, we go to Ibn Kathir. If you don't like Ibn Kathir, we go to the son of Mutaz. He created the heaven and raised them up above the earth without visible support, he says. You see them without support, and also say this is mean they have support which you do not see. Between two bracket, then mount mounted in the throne. Okay, what is the support we can not see, and why we cannot see? Then we have to go to a chapter in the Quran. It's called the chapter of Qaf. Chapter of what? Qaf. Don't ask me what Qaf, because now we will show you. Chapter of Qaf, verse number fifty. Sorry, sorry, chapter number fifty, verse number one. Qaf. The Muslim they say. Those are letters, but this is not letters. What the heck? Let us go to the interpretation and you will die laughing. Hof is a mountain surrounding the earth from all direction. And the sky take its color from it because it's an azure mountain. It's a blue mountain. Who said so? This is not the tomato sauce. Those are the real scholars. This is Ibn Abbas, the only one who was certified by Muhammad to explain the Quran. The only one in the history of Islam. Muhammad, he prayed to Allah. He said, may Allah make Ibn Abbas the ink of the nation, which means the ink of knowledge. In the authority, and as you see, authority, do uh, Naik and potato sauce, tomato sauce have authority? They are nobody. Ibn Abbas, he said, in the interpretation of Allah saying Qaf, Qaf, he says, it's an azure mountain overlooking the world. And the color of the sky takes from it. Allah swear by it. Do you see it? Now the Muslim, they will say to you, Christian prince is lying. Abdul, this is your book. Potato, it's not me saying that. Do you see it? Now we have Ahmad Abbas talking about Islamophobic. Ahmad Abbas, I don't know, Muslims, they talk about Islamophobic, but nobody is phobic as Muslims. You are phobic from pork. You are phobic from music. You are phobic from a chess. Even if somebody playing chess, you are phobic from it. You are phobic from, from dancing. You are phobic from uh, 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 anything. The cross, the, even the pig. I mean, you, and you are talking about phobia. 
You're a prophet, even have a phobia from lizard. He ordered you to kill lizard. Even you Muslim, you have a fatwa against the mice. He's the enemy of Allah. And you are talking about phobia? When a Muslim speak about phobia, he is talking about himself, or this is the religion of phobia. They have phobia from the Jews. They have phobia from the Hindus. They have phobia from the Christians. They have phobia from the from the atheists. They have phobia from uh, uh, the gay. They have phobia from the lesbian. They have phobia from Mikey Mouse. They have phobia from the lizard. Even the lizard is an enemy of Allah. A Muslim speaking about phobia. Do you dare to call me and tell me why you want to kill the lizard? Ah, uh, misunderstood you? Oh, okay, uh, then I apologize if I misunderstood you. I don't know, I thought you are saying something. Now let us continue. So the Big Bang suddenly is in the Quran. Anything else? People want to remind me, Zach and Nike, he said about period. Let's focus on the topic now about days. Did, did he, did anyone say something to you about how many days of creation? Oh, not only that. Not only that. The stupid Quran cannot maintain itself. In one verse it says, Allah created the earth and heaven in six days. And the other verse says, Allah created them in eight days. And then the Muslims, they try to fix it, as usual. Chapter 41, verse number 9 and 10. Do you deny the one who created the earth and the, and the, and the, uh, the, the earth in two days? Guys, is the verse here? He created the earth in two days. And then he created everything in the top of the earth in four days. It's clear. And then, after that, not moreover, this is a false translation. It is after that. And after that, he created the sky in two days. Total is eight days. Potatoes. And now what we will do? In order to cover the ass of Allah, because his popo is so big. We say, oh brother, brother, listen. Here he says, he created the earth in two days, okay? And then four days is included in the two days here. Like, what the heck? It's so clear. And by the way, the translation again is false. وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا رَوَاسِي Wa is harfu atuf for what is coming after. And he plays therein in the top of it in four days. So two days to create the earth, four days to create everything at the top of the earth, two days to create the sky. The total is what? Eight days. Different verse in the Quran says it clearly, there are six days. Actually, Muhammad, he said there are seven days. How you can prove it? I will show you. <laughs> All those verses in front of us says Allah created the earth and the heaven in six days. So now we have verses saying Allah created the earth and the heaven in six days. And we have a chapter 41, verse number 9, 10, 11, says clearly that the earth created in eight days. Muhammad, he have a different idea. The earth and the heaven and everything created in seven days. How we prove it? Let us go to the poopoo guy. Muhammad, he cannot keep his mouth shut. Read with me. You guys, you are better than me in mathematics. Let us count together how many days there are. Shall we? Let us do it. He created the uh, clay on Saturday. So this is day number one. He created the mountains on Sunday. This is day number two. He created the trees on Monday. He created the things in Thailand labor on Tuesday. He created the light in Wednesday. 
he caused the animal to spread in Thursday. He created Adam, peace be upon him, in Friday afternoon. What is the total? Seven days. People, do you see it? Saturday to Friday, and Friday until the sunset, which means the whole Friday is gone. Remember, in the old days, they don't go by the 24 hours like now. They go by the sunset. Sunset is a new day. This is actually the Jewish too. So, verses in the Quran saying, Allah created the earth and the heaven in six days. Chapter 41, verse number 9, 10, 11, says Allah created the earth in eight days. The stupid Muhammad, he made them seven days. Anyone can explain to us? Am I lying, Muslims? You're a liar. Christian Prince, you're a liar. It, it, it's not seven days. Let us count them again. Okay. Saturday is one. Sunday is two. Monday is three. Tuesday is four. Wednesday is five. Thursday is six. Friday is seven. Christian Prince, you are a liar. First of all, you add in more days. Like, what the heck? It's in the front of you. Let us count them again. Muslims, they are slow. Saturday is one. Sunday is two. Monday is three. Tuesday is four. Wednesday is five. Thursday is six. And Friday is seven. Christian Prince, you are a liar. I'm going to expose you. The Hadith does not say so. Like, what the heck? He's a liar. Don't listen to him. And this is a weak hadith. It's not weak. This is Sahih Muslim. So what if it's Sahih Muslim? <laughs> so what if it's Sahih Muslim, huh? So what? The Muslim these days, they take hadith from CC and Mimi and uh, tomato sauce. They are the source of hadith. Do you see how stupid this religion is? And do you see why we say Islam without lies dies? This is the truth. We have one more idiot. You can remind me of somebody we need to get him busted about day two. Let us see this idiot here. Uh, not this one. This one we finish with him. Uh, no, not this one. Man, I have like a hundred pages open. Uh, we have another idiot. This is Shabir Ali. And I later I found out that he's a, this is his daughter. I thought this is like a, somebody else. It turned to be his daughter. So Shabir Ali is discussing the story of, uh, you know, the flood of Noah. Okay, Shabir Ali, tell us one. Uh, uh, uh. The contest between believers and non-believers, God comes in and saves the, the believers. Um, in, in the biblical narrative, it is uh, the family of, of Noah that is saved like this. And one might presume that... Just to show you how stupid you are, well, the family of Noah, because they are the only believers, you idiot, continue. They are believers, but that does not seem to be the cutting edge, uh, the, oh. the divisive factor between uh, those who are in the ark and those who are not. It oh, looks hold on, like hold on, hold on, hold on. I remember now, there's something more important than this one. There's more important. The brother and sister, there's an error in the Bible. What is that? The Bible says that the earth was covered by water. And by the way, you can find that in the that video too. And this is why they are copying him. And Zach and I is copying him too. 
Let us see. Let us see this one here. Try not to laugh. I would like to ask Dr. Kamp if uh, in Genesis it says when it talks about the flood. Let us move to to uh, to the uh, to Zachary Naik. I, I, I tried to find a video of Zachary Naik talking. This one is just an audio. I don't know if somebody have the. Uh, William Campbell gave a reply to Nuh alayhi salam. I am a person who is a concordist approach with the Bible and conflict approach with the Quran because both with Alhamdulillah, Quran will pass the test. And even if I agree with Dr. William Campbell, and I agree with him, it is right, that it was 15 feet above the highest mountain. But it's mentioned in Genesis chapter number 7, verse number 19 and 20, that the full world was submerged under water. And furthermore, archaeological evidence shows us today and the time of Noah's time, if you calculate by genealogy, it comes to in the 21st to 22nd century BC. Archaeological evidence shows us today that the third dynasty of Babylon and 11th dynasty of Egypt were present at the 21st and 22nd century BC, and there was no evidence of flood, <laughs> and they remain uninterrupted. Therefore, archaeological evidence shows us that it's impossible that the earth was submerged, the full earth was submerged under water in the 21st, 22nd century BC, what about the Quran? What about the Quran? Hey. Point number one. Hmm. Quran does not give a date. But the 21st century BC. You see, Quran does not give a date. We just showed you the date. Because now we knew what was between Muhammad and Noah. So how would you not know the date? The date is 4,900 years. Take 1,000 years from the date of you remember the calculation we did? 5,499 is the date between all the way from Adam to Muhammad. Take 1,000 years off, because now this is Noah. That is 4,499 years. Potato. Let us continue. Of 50th century BC, no date. Point number two. Quran, nowhere does the Quran say the full world was submerged under water. It speaks about Noah alayhi salam and his form and his people. A small group of people or maybe a large group of people. Archaeological evidences tell today and the archaeologists they say that we have no objection it's possible that parts of the world was submerged under water but full world it's not possible so alhamdulillah the quran is matching with the latest discovery in archaeology but the bible does not furthermore if you read genesis chapter number six hold on let us get him busted in fact the quran Victor, dr tashkil i will answer you my friend after i finish with zakir naik get ready i will grow hair in your head after you lost it. Just to show you the liars, according to the Quran, the earth was covered by water. Here we go. You see the liars? He just said, in the Quran, nowhere it says that the earth is covered by water. Liars. Liars. Chapter 11, verse number 43. The sons of Noah, one of the sons of Noah, he said, I'm going to run and I will climb the highest mountain so I can be saved from the flood. What happened? He said to him, in this day, there's no survive form. 
which means all the mountains in the earth is covered by water. Now, maybe Christian Prince is liar. Let us see the interpretation. All interpretation agree that all the earth was covered by water. And Muhammad Zakir Naik is a scam like the rest. Chapter 11, verse number 43. Try not to laugh. Even the verse says waves like mountains. This is how big they are. And for sure they cover the mountains. And this is why the Muslim actually, they believe that the ship of Noah landed in the top of a mount, in the mountain. Uh, And yeah, I don't want to forget, I mean, the Muslim, they speak about science. Uh, uh, if you remember, Muhammad, he told the Muslims how Allah was able to uh, get the lion inside the ship. He make him have a flu. And then when they got the lion inside the ship, uh, he, you know, he was asleep, like because he's sick. Uh, they noticed there's a mice in the ship. And then Allah, he made the mountain sneeze and the cat came from his mouth. And this is how Noah, food was saved from the mice. If you want, I can show the reference for Ibn Kathir himself. Here he says, This is mean the ship sailed with them upon the surface of the water, which had completely covered the earth until it's a, 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 a composed the top of the mountains, even rose over them by the height of 15 cubit. Do you see it, Sons of Muta? Sons of Mutaz, do you see it? Your stupid prophet, he is copying the Bible. The son of Mutaz, Akarnaik, he says, in Islam, we don't have that. And this is an error. And there is no way this is happening. Do you see how they compromise? And do you see why we laugh at this cult? And now, how many lies we prove to you? I mean, how many we have to prove in one day? Ask yourself a very simple question. If this is a religion coming from God, why do people are lying to win an argument? You see the Christian, they ask the Christian, the Bible says that, he said yes, so what? You ask the Muslim, he said, no, we don't believe in that. This is their books. And this is what they believe in for the last, teen, last 14 centuries. And Zakir Naik, he was proving, according to scientists, that there's no way the earth was, co was covered all, all of it by water. And you will find many of the Muhammadan making videos about this. <laughs> the Bible says the earth was covered by water. In fact, scientists, they discovered that, yes, the earth was merged and covered by water. And I'm going to show you from a Christian website. <laughs> I just make a search. New search, research, suggests ancient earth was water world with no land in sight. Do you see it? This is not a Christian website. <laughs> so, the Muhammadan are following a scammer. And in order to make a scam work, the scam has to continue. And as you see, here we are exist to bust it. The question, how many of you care? How many of you will download? How many of you will take notes? Very few. Most of you are coming just to love. Sadly. If you go and see how many of you are Muslim Abdul who is lying and we get him busted lying. How many of you he have? 
And how many of you we have? You won't notice that many, none of you care. The Muslim, they swarm to support their lies. The Christians are relaxed. Don't worry. Be happy. They are fooling your kids. They can fool them. Don't you think you cannot? Don't think that a liar cannot convince a naive kid. They are relaxed. In our churches, the Christians are waving their hands to Jesus. This is what Jesus told you to do. Where is your teaching? Where is your preaching? Where is you getting there? those people busted? Why your children do not learn about the cults around them? Why our churches are mute? And not only that, you will find many sons of Mutaz who claim to be priests saying to your kids that Islam is Abrahamic. In order to make your kids accept Islam to be Abrahamic. Go check them out. And not only that, many priests, sons of Mutaz, they are inviting Muslims to teach about Islam in your churches. Lying to your kids in your church like James White. And you will find those kind of people in every church, Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox. Filthy, coward, liars. The Bible says it clearly. Who is the Antichrist? Who is the Antichrist? The Antichrist is the one who denied the Father and deny the son. So how you invite the Antichrist to your church to teach? How? How you lie to your children in the church, saying to them that those are Abrahamic. What a shame. So I say to you, we have a big enemy inside our churches. When you go to a church, ask the one who called himself a priest. Who is the Antichrist? And let him read the verses if he remember them, because many of them they are doing business. And then ask him if you remember the verses. Will Islam deny the anti deny Jesus as the Son and God our Father? So is Islam Antichrist? Let us see what he will say. If he starts shaking his head, giving excuse, he is no Christian. As simple as that. Be aware, my friend. We are in a time where everybody is perfectly correct. We are in a time where lying is a way of life. We are in a time where liars are successful. And those who don't lie, people, they spit at them. We don't follow a priest. We don't follow a bishop. We don't follow a pope. We have a book, it's called Holy. And the text is so clear. Muhammad, he came, he said, I am one of my names as the eraser. And he says, I came to erase Christianity and Judaism. How your priests invite those liars to your churches. And the what excuse?
let us ask uh, answer some Abdul's and so we can love. We will go back in uh, comment. We have this comment first here. He said here. Let us show it on the screen. Why your Jesus he cried when he when the man he died if he knew he could bring him back to life. It's clear in your Bible that your Jesus did not know he was God, who was simply a prophet, P-P-U-H. Well, you stupid idiot. Jesus, he told them, you can destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. And he was talking about his body. So Jesus, there's many verses in the Bible that speak that Jesus, he knew he is going to come back to life. And simply, you cannot kill God. What you kill, you kill the flesh. The flesh. Jesus was exist before his flesh. So they killed the flesh, but nobody can kill God. And now here we see the stupidity of the Mohammedan. If Jesus cannot be God, for he died in the cross, well, this Jesus must be God in Islam then, because he never died in the cross. And nobody can kill him, obviously. He is bulletproof, according to Islam. Jesus in the cross, he quoted from the Old Testament, a quotation, Eli, Eli. This is a quotation mentioned thousands of years before us. He was quoting that you are doing to me something unjust. Go and read the whole quotation. No crime I commit. No guilt I did. Why you are treating me like this? This is what Jesus was saying. Otherwise, Jesus, before the crucifixion happened, Jesus, he knew who was going to give him up. He knew who was going to betray him. He knew even what the time. So you are stupid. Let us go to the second Abdul. This Abdul is trying to be smarter. He said, so basically what you say, when Jesus took partnership with God, and the stupidity here, by the way, I wasn't talking about Jesus at all. But the guy, the basically what you say, he's talking to who? Dummy. Talking to me, as you see in the name of Christian Prince. But I wasn't talking about Jesus. <laughs> so basically, what you say when Jesus took partnership with God, I, I want to understand how Jesus he took partnership with God. He buy he bought some stocks. I mean, you see the stupidity of the words. You see, my English is not good, but I cannot find stupidity more than he took partnership with God. How is that? He did not leave his faith in Judaism. First of all, you stupid son of Muta. Jesus was the God of the Jews. He is not a Jew. And how we can prove that? He asked the Jew, what do you say of the Messiah? They said to him, he is the son of David. The Messiah, he said, well, if he is a son of David, then how David, he call him my God. Potato. Did David call Jesus my God? This is the Messiah speaking to the Jews. He said to them, what are you saying about the Messiah? Now, who is talking? This is the Messiah himself. So you can say this is the interpretation of John or Peter or no. This is the Messiah himself. What you say of the Messiah? Who is son is he? They were, they say to him, well, he's son of David. He said to them, well, and how then David call him by his spirit? You see the word spirit? By his spirit, which means the flesh of Jesus is not there yet. The flesh of Jesus is not on the earth. He called him by his spirit, the Lord Jehovah, for he said, the Lord Jehovah said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I place your enemy under your feet. So as you see, you stupid idiot, Jesus never claimed that he was a Jew. 
he claimed to be the God of the Jews. And he was. So when you say he left his faith, faith in what? In himself? You are a dummy. If Jesus keeps saying, my father, my father, how he left his faith? And how God can leave his faith? Unless he's a Muslim. Because the God of Islam is the one who leave his faith. Let us show it to you. Allah, according to the Quran, he spoke to somebody and then he lost the debate. He converted to Islam. And he took shahada. This is your stupid Quran. In chapter 3, verse number 18, it says that Allah, he said, there is no Allah but Allah. Like, what the heck? Do you see it? Uh, now, a Muslim, he is trying to be smart. So if Jesus was God, who is the Father? Jesus, he is the Son of God. And because he's the son of God, he is divine. And God mean in Christianity, and you know that, and you are playing games because you are a son of Muta, that when we say God, we say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This is what God. So if Jesus was God, who is the Father? God. Who is the Son? God. Who is the Holy Spirit? God. For God is one. Oh, so if the Holy Spirit is God, so who is Jesus? God. And who is the Father? God. But that means you have a three God. No, Abdul, we have one God. God himself is in three person. If you want to redesign God as you wish, good luck with that. That means you are a hypocrite. You don't tell God how he can be. How come you don't ask your God how he can be one? What if God decides to be ten? You say to him, I don't like you. I don't like ten. Can you make yourself 99? Silly, very stupid argument. This is the argument of women giving birth in the delivery room, and there is no morphine. So she starts talking and saying whatever in order to forget her pain. Are you in pain? Is the baby is coming? Let me know. Do we have any other Abdul? Anyone? Any other tricks? You see, the, uh, when the Muslims they speak about we believe in one God, right? <clears throat> okay. And you believe in one God, but this God you do not know how the baby is created. Your God, he think women have a sperm coming from her ribs. Your God, he think the sperm of the man is coming from the backbone. Your God, he think the sun set in a, in a muddy spring. Your God, he think that there is a setting place for the sun and there is rising place for the sun. Your God, he don't even remember which one he created first, the stars or the mountains. So how he can be God? Hmm? How he can be God? Stupidity is amazing. A God who did not know what he did? That would be funny. Like imagine, you have somebody claim to be God and you ask him, God, how you did this? You do not know. Uh, this Abdul, he said to us in the chat, let us take a selfie for him. Can you explain this, please? How I can explain it to you? Are you listening? If you have little knowledge, you will know that you are stupid. Why? Because it says God is a God, and a God is mean unity. It's not one. A God is a word mean unite, unity, not not one person. That's why the same Bible says that man he leave his parents and he join his wife and become a God. Is the man and the women are one person? No. So echad in Hebrew is not a word mean one. It's a unity. Potatoes. Anyone else? Who is next? 
My friend, I am offensive. You don't like it, you leave. Because when you give me stupid question, obviously, either you are being silly, or you decide to become silly in purpose. So I have to give you what you deserve. Because if you are really a person who research, all what you need to do, go and search what the word there, one, is in the Hebrew, and you will find that this is the Echad, and Echad does not, man, does not mean one person. So how come you know that verse specifically, but you, but you do not know the rest of the Bible? That's mean you decide to be silly. Either you are a silly person, cop, copy paste from a Muslim website, or you are a silly person who knew the Bible and you are playing. Which one is you? At the end of the day, still silly. Where is the admin, Lisa? We took her last time by mistake from the admin, maybe. I don't see her in the chat. She have to say something so I can add her back. They asked me how she was removed. I said, Allah knows best. Who knows much better than Allah? Do we have any Muhammadan? And you know, the Muslim, they claim everything the Muslim, they claim it is they what they have, not us. No problem, no problem. You see the funny, uh, got it? Your name is got it. Your name is got it. But I don't think you got anything. I will tell you why. In the age of the internet, where answers can be in the, in the fingertips of your finger, and your name, I got it, or got it. And then you ask the most silly questions, obviously, either you never, you know, I mean, how many Christians you ask them the same question? And how many of them they answer you? And tomorrow you will go to the front page and you will ask the same question. And your name is what? Got it. I'm not sure where you got it, but you got it in the wrong location. Do we have any Muhammadan? So they accuse you of fornication and they are the follower of the fornicator and religion of Islam is religion of fornication. You can do muta. You can rent women. You can have temporary marriage, which is not marriage. Obviously, it's for sex. You can even, they have something called zawaj a friend, which means you have a friend. You tell her, let us make zawaz. Huh? I will see you next Wednesday. Boom, boom. And we don't live together. Zawaj a friend. Not boyfriend, haram, haram boyfriend, haram. We have zawaj friend, brother. What the heck? They have even zawaj called zawaj al misyur. What does that mean? Well, trouble, trouble marriage. You go to the hotel. You are going to stay there for five days. I cannot do haram, haram. You ask the manager, can you provide me with women to marry me for four days? This is Islam. Uh, Dr. Tashkil, he is an, uh, a Muslim. Look, look how smart the Muslims are. And actually, the Muslims they are copying their intelligence from Muhammad and Allah. Read Allah. Great temperance. Tell me why God he would have a son without a wife. Do you think this is this honorable? not only for God, but for a human. So the tashkil, Dr. Tashkil, your God, he need to F a woman in order to be honorable. <laughs> you see the stupidity? Well, it's not honorable for a human being, for sure a human being is not honorable anyway. For he's a sinner. He's made it from flesh, and he died under the, the dust, and the worm ate him. This is why Jesus says, I am from above, you are from below. So for sure, Jesus, God is not like us. He is holy, we are not. So look what happened now. I will go with your logic, you stupid son of Muta. This is what your God, Allah, he said. How Allah can have a son if you don't have a girlfriend? And here we ask ourselves, how God can be God, and remember he is one God, if he cannot have a son without having a woman? So according to your religion, your God is a man like us. 
He need to have a wife in order to have a son. My God, he do not need a wife. Why? For his almighty. He do not need. He is what he is. I am who I am. Your God cannot be the one who must have created Jesus. Why? Because as you see, Jesus is born of Mary, according to the Quran. And Mary, she was a virgin. And I will go with your stupid logic. If it is not honorable for a person to come without sex for a human being, then how is Jesus, you idiot, he is born without sex? Remember, it is you who came with the idea. Tell me, why God, he would have a son without a wife? You don't think this is dishonorable, not only for God, but for a human being, you stupid idiot. So how your God, he says that Jesus is a son without sex and without husband. And remember, he's born, not like Adam. So their logic is broken and their IQ is so dimmy. Like, you know, I don't want to say it's not exist. It's exist, but it's in the bathroom. This guy will be so smart if the topic change about, can I shave my pubic area? Can I do masturbation? A Muslim woman, she called Muslim TV and she asked, and obviously she's a whore. She said to the sheikh, two sheikh are sitting in the TV. I wish I have at that time program to record it. Alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, the Muslim female. The sheikh, wa alaikum assalam, sister, said, I have a question, but um, sister, go ahead, sister, what the question? Uh, my sister told me that when I take off my clothes, and I'm very pretty, by the way, when I take my clothes in the front of the fish tank, the fish, they start shaking. What do you think, sheikh? The sheikh, he grabbed the water and he started drinking. He is losing his voice. <sighs> okay, a sister, <clears throat> and you look at each other. A sister, I think, I think, and this, uh, this uh, fish tank have genie. And those fish, they have genie inside them. So sister, they are looking at your pure, uh, beautiful body. So you should not take off your clothes in the front of the fish tank. The woman, she answered, she said, Okay, but this is the only room where I will go. He said, <clears throat> okay, sister, uh, can you, uh, uh, okay, um, <clears throat> um, uh, okay, uh, uh, I advise you to cover the fish tank by the blanket. Like, what the heck? And those are the one who will understand the nature of Jesus. The one who believe a fish in the fish tank is masturbating, looking at their women. And where they get this from? From Muhammad. Muhammad, he told them that genie can have sex with you. How? It's in the Quran. The stupid Quran says, Allah, he promised the Muslim women, never been effed by a human, neither by genie. So we are talking about people coming from the Hori Buter era, where they have a flying broom, and they are speaking about logic. When they want, they have logic. When they want, they have no logic. What kind of God he promised you? Women in heaven, they've been never, never been effed. You see the, here the translation trying to be, you know, never been effed and bleed by genie or mankind. And since when genie, they have sex with your wife? The prophet said, if you don't say a prayer, shaitan, he'll round himself around your penis and he will do boom, boom to your wife. Actually, if you have my book, Sex and Allah, you will see a Muslim guy who opened the door on his wife and he found a fire in her bushes. What bushes we are talking about? Her pubic area. What the heck? The sheikh, he answered him, this is because she is having sex with the genie. Remember, genie are made from fire. So now be careful. If you are a Muslim woman and you have sex with the genie, your bushes is going to cut in fire. You better shave it. Or get a fire distinguish. The sheikh, instead of saying to him, obviously your wife is horny and obviously you are not doing your job, so she is playing with herself. What he say to him? She is having sex with the genie. Genie. If you don't believe me, you can go right now to Google and search sex with genie. That's what the Muslim believe.
And the funny is that this genie is invisible. And he round himself around the penis. Is he a duct tape? What do you mean he round himself? Like so when you do sex with your wife, the whole genie go inside? Not his penis. And not only that, Muhammad, he claimed that they can have babies from you. And the Muslim, he speak about logic. And the same Muslim who speak about logic, he believed that shaitan, he have a penis in his right leg, right thigh, and he have a vagina in the left thigh. Logic. How do you want to answer that? Because, well, if Allah, he kicked out on only one shaitan from heaven, how we have all of those shaitans? The Muslim, they have to come to a story or to find a solution. So they come to an idea. Well, you know what? Shaitan, he have a penis, and he have a vagina, and he lay eggs. If you don't believe me, I can show you the reference. So how Shaitan, he have sex? He shake his legs. And by doing that, yankahu hada bidak. He f this by that. And the Muslim, they say to you, by the way, the word nikah mean what marriage? But Shaitan now doing nikah to who? To himself. He's effing himself. This is how Muslims, they try to use logic. When they want, they are logical. When they want only. Is it logical that your penis will be endless and your wife is next to you? How you are, how you are going to have sex with her? I hope that your wife, she is so good in hiking. She will spend her eternity just hiking your penis to reach the top. And as long as it's endless, that will be endless hiking, so she will never reach the top. How much time speaking about logic? What I can say? A Muhammadan who believed that Allah, he sent the school of Harry Potter to open a school of black magic in the Babylon. And what is the purpose of this school? To make man and wife fight and get divorced, brother. Like what the heck? Allah, he opened a school like this, brother? Yes, brother. What? Uh, look, look how fast the Muslim, they change the topic. From everything I said, he, he changed now. He says, you lied about the Quran. Insulin is not made from pork. Read. You lied about the Quran and pork. It's forbidden for us only the flesh of the pork to be eaten. It's okay to use the fat and the pig for insulin. <coughs> a donkey, a, a, a potato. I want you to show me the reference that you can eat the fat of the pig. Go ahead. Can you? Secondly, you strip it. Do you follow the Quran or do you follow something else? The Quran says to you, forbidden for you is pigs. He did not say some of it. He said pigs. In the top of that, how you are forbidden to grow pigs, but you are going to use the fat of the pigs. <laughs> I hope you are not talking about your wife. Because if you are forbidden to have them, to touch them, to be in your town, how you are going to use their insulin? Ah, we go to the Christians, the Hindus, the Buddhists. If they have pigs, we ask them for some fat, brother. What a potato you are. In the top of that, by the way, Muhammad, he said, everything is forbidden for you. There's no benefit from it. Is that correct? Everything is forbidden for you. There's no benefit from it, period. Let us show the hadith. And as long 
the pigs is forbidden. Muhammad, he made it clear that there is nothing, no cure can come to you from pigs. And this is the reference. Do you see it? In different hadith, Muhammad he says, He made for you, for every illness, a cure. So don't use what is forbidden for a cure. And as you see, this is Sahih. So you cannot play the game and say, This is not. Sahih. You see Sahih? So Muhammad again is a stupid fool. Another thing, the Muslim they forbid eating pork, and now we know why, which is wrong, but they allow you to drink camel urine. But isn't it the Old Testament forbid the camel? How Muhammad he claimed that he is following the steps of Moses, he allowed to eat the camel, and he not only that, he encouraged them to drink his piss. This is different hadith, it says. <clears throat> Messenger of Allah saying, he sent down, Allah, he sent down both the disease and the cure. And he has appointed a cure for every disease. So treat yourself medically, but use nothing and law for. Do you see it? Now I'm waiting for you to show me where it's lawful to use pigs. Are you there, Abdul? Any Abdul? <coughs> you lie, you lie. La 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 la. Any Abdul? Are we out of them? <clears throat> and here we go I just found you the fatwa and this is Ibn Baz he says وَأَمَّا الْخِنْزِيرُ فَقَدْ أَجْمَعَتُ الْأُمَّةَ عَلَى تَحْرِيمْ جَمِيعَ أَجَزَائِهِ it is forbidden totally all the part of the pig to use in any way and you are a potato. Google translation, please be upon him. <laughs> you know, when the Muslims, uh, they are desperately trying to find a solution for the poopoo of their prophet, uh, and they cannot find, you know, a solution. So we have to lie in order to cover up his stupidity. Pork, there's oil. Even steel making involved pork. Can you believe it? Chocolate. Leather. Stitches. Insulin. And Muhammad, he made it clear that you cannot use any part of pigs as a cure. Did we save the reference, guys? Let me give you the reference for this one in case you care to have reference.
And you know, I encourage Muslims to make videos about how to dip a fly inside the dish. Remember, Muhammad he said, anything is not forbidden for you, there's a cure in it. Anything have forbidden for you has no cure in it. Fly is not forbidden for Muslim to eat. So they can buy shish kebab fly. I challenge you to tell me that you cannot eat it. Show me the reference. Look what it says here. Muhammad he said that if a fly fell down, uh, this is about Muslims have a lot of, uh, here we go. If a fly fail in your vessel, one of you, let him dip it. Science. I challenge Muslim to make videos and bring a bunch of flies, not only one. I mean, make a soup of a flies. Just uh, mix very well the flies inside the soup and drink it. What do you think? And by the way, look at this here. Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, used to give people thick grape juice into which fly would falls and not be able to get out again. Is that to eat it, Muslims? Are you hunting flies or what? Well, the hadith is accepted hadith. That's why it's there. You see, the, the, the stupidity of the Muhammadan is didn't know that the hadith is a da'if argument. Go and watch Sheikh Hamza, he said. The argument of the hadith, a weak hadith, is a weak argument. This is why it's there in the book, you stupid, you donkey. If this hadith is not accepted, it's not going to be there. Da'if did not flunk. It's not a junk. It's accepted. I mean, look at the stupid religion. If this hadith is bad, why you put it in the book then? Me. Stupid. I mean, imagine I, somebody want to add a verse in the Bible, and we Christian, we knew it's a lie. This is not from the Bible. And then we add it. So we add it there and we write next to it Da'if? Are you stupid or what? Mental. I have a friend, he said to me, you should not go too much online and or you should disable the chat because I noticed that those stupid people, they make your blood boil. One day you might have a heart attack from the stupidity of those people. I said to him, don't worry, I'm used to it. He said, I watch you, and then I, I see like how you get so upset from the stupidity, and I, I cannot believe it how you handle it. My friend, I'm dealing with those people for, for a century. Stupidity is Islam, and Islam is a stupidity. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Did we have a good time? And by the way, I was, plan I was planning to make the video short today. How long we are here now? Because I have a lot of work to do. Almost two hours. Short video. I think the only way I can make short video if I make the chat disabled or I pre-record it. I don't think I don't know how I can make it. Uh, Oh boy. You see, it's fine to be ignorant, but not about your belief. 
You see, ignorance is part of our nature. We are all of us. We have a form of ignorance. If you ask me about India, I know nothing about it. This is ignorance. But this is not my belief. So it's a shame that those people they claim that they have a religion, and they want to defend their religion, and they try to defend their religion by lying to us, using our ignorance against us. Because most of us, or maybe all of us, we do not know. You go to the church, what the priest he says to you, today we will read John, okay. Tomorrow we will read Mark, okay. But he never ask, answer you. He never let you ask questions. We have Jehovah's Witnesses, we have Mormonism, we have atheism, we have whatever, liberalism, we have allism, we have Islamism, all, all the madness. And our priest is doing what? He's just so good and reading for you a chapter from the Bible. He do not want to answer anything. Why? Because he is not serious. He's not a true believer. He's just doing business. He don't want to give it time from his time. He want to go home. But thanks to the Lord, we made a revolutionary. And a person like me, who is nobody, I have my books translated to all languages in the world almost. From Chinese to Indian languages, to Albanian, to Croatian, to Russian, to you name it. German, Portuguese, it's a Spanish. This is what happens when you are a true believer. And a true believer does not mean I'm better than you. I'm a sinner and maybe more sinner than you. But a true believer is someone who works hard against himself when he is sinner and serving the Lord when he is not. Uh, <clears throat> if Dr. Tashkil would like to speak to me, I can open Skype for you, Dr. Tashkil. Do you want to talk to me? Just let me know, and I will open Skype just for you, just specifically for you. I mean, your name is Dr. You can speak to us, especially your name is Tashkil. We can ask you about some Tashkil in the Quran. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think we have enough for today. And uh, let us see how many. Did Jesus eat pork? I don't know. And did Muhammad eat pork? I challenge you to prove to me that Muhammad never ate pork. You see, the Muslim disclaim things which is absolutely false. As an example, they say to you that in order to be a Muslim, you have to be circumcised. Well, Muhammad never circumcised. Never. Show me where he, where, show me how he was circumcised. Never. They claim they don't eat pork. Show me where Muhammad never ate pork. In fact, Muslim, they used to eat pork and Muslim, they used to drink and that's why the Quran forbid it. Your prophet, even he eat poo-poo. Isn't it piss is a form of poo-poo, but it's liquid one? And you, who is the person who claimed that you don't eat pork, but then we find a prophet who jump with dead dogs and women blood from period and garbage in the water. And then he put that in his mouth. When you do ablution, is it true that you have to put water inside your mouth? Yes or no? The answer is yes. Is it true that you have to put it even in your nose? Yes or no? The answer is yes. So how a water have dead dogs and women of blood from period and garbage going inside your mouth and you claim you don't eat pork? And why you Muslim don't follow the steps of your prophet? Why we don't see Muslims in YouTube making videos of them doing ablution with water have dead dogs and women of blood from period and garbage? And look, the garbage is not just a garbage. It says it's stinking things, which means it's already in the bye-bye garbage. Because 
Like in America, if you see the American garbage, you will see how clean it is. Seriously. But this is a stinking garbage, which means it is exposed to germs and bacteria for a long time. Do you see? This is your Muslim translation. Stinking things are thrown there. What is it throwing there? Stinking things. Not just garbage. Do you see it, Abdul? And then they come to you and say, we don't eat pork, brother. Haram! Phobia. Phobia from lizard, phobia from pork, phobia from music. And they are the one who watch porn. And they are the one who... Number one countries in the world who search for sex with donkey is Muslims. Who said that? Google. And what they call it? Pornistan. Do you see it? Pakistan is top dog searching for sex with horse. Sex with horse, sex with donkey, rape pictures. Actually, there's somebody, he sent me a video. Two Muslim sheikhs are debating. One, he said to the other one, if you interrupt me, he will do oral sex for him. I'm serious. This is live debate in YouTube. The first sheikh, he said to the other sheikh, if you interrupt me, I will perform oral sex for you. And then they make speeches about it and the debate, they are debating about religion, remember? Those are two shakes. Do you see the stupidity of this religion? How far stupidity can go? You want to perform oral sex with him. Actually, I have the video here. Let us, uh, let us uh, play some of it for you. <laughs> Give me a second. This guy in the video, he's saying that th those two shakes they exceed the low trash language of Mimi Hijab. This guy is an ex-Muslim, he's an atheist. His name is Hari Sultan. Um, being the guy who is getting it rather than giving it. <laughs> but he kept saying, to you sell. Let's go a little bit. Uh, Watch it at your own risk, but this some other Muslim channels and what I'm about to show you is going to shock you. This is how low the Islamic Dava scene has actually fallen to. So watch it at your own risk, but this conversation is beyond hilarious. Watching in your he learned a new word called oral sex and he didn't know <laughs> how to use that word. I think he intended to use it being a um, being the guy who is getting it rather than giving it, <laughs> but he kept saying giving it. Have a, have, have a listen. Listen to me. Listen to me, my brother. Oral, oral sex. No, 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 no. 
बीच में उसूल आपने बनाया अब ओरल सेक्स भी साथ साथ करवाना है आपने कोई से ये, ये देखे ना बोता लगा रहे हैं ना दो मिनट में ओरल सेक्स भी करवा लें जल्दी जल्दी तो नहीं इफ यू इंटरप्ट मी लेट अस हैव ओरल सेक्स दिस इज टू शेक्स और डिबेटिंग वन ऑफ देम ही वांट टू डू ओरल सेक्स टू द अदर गाय इफ ही इंटरप्ट हिम He's making a threat. Do you see Islam? And those who speak the language, they knew what they, what he's saying. I challenge you to tell us that this guy is lying, and it's not true, and the translation is false. It only take two minutes. Let us have oral sex. Let us. It take only two minutes. How long it take? No, 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 no. Beach me usool. You have made. Now oral sex also. You have to do it. You have to do it. Who is it? This is the guy who is talking. Two minutes. Me oral sex also. Do it quickly, quickly. Doctor Tashkil, you said that my people walk naked in the street. My friend, your God, he made Moses walk naked in the street in order to show his anus and his testicles. You are stupid like your prophet. If walking naked in the street is bad, why your God, he forced Moses to go naked? And why your prophet himself was naked around the Kaaba? And Allah never opened his mouth. And why the Arab, they used to go naked around the Kaaba and Allah never made a verse against it? Dr. Tashkil, are you threatening me that you will do oral sex? You stupid son of Muta. Isn't it this is your prophet who said that the Jews accuse Moses that he have something wrong with his penis? So Allah, he made a stone run and take his clothes and Moses, he run after it totally naked. Naked temperance. Your people walk naked. Nobody walk naked as Muslim do. You are naked even with your clothes. And this is your nakedness here. Isn't it this is your God making a stone steal the, 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 the clothes of Moses so he can walk naked in front of the children and women? So Muslim women, they can see his penis and praise Allah how nice his penis is? Is that Sahih Hadith or Da'if Hadith? Da'if Hadith. But this is Al-Bukhari and this is Muslim. I don't accept this Hadith. What the heck? And by the way, it's proven to us that even stones, Muslim stones, are thieves. Because this is a stone obeying Allah. So, Moses, he took his clothes, he put it in the rock, in an area there's nobody around him, so he can take a shower. The Jews, they accuse Moses that he have a problem with his penis. Allah wanted to prove them wrong. So Allah, he ordered a stone to steal the clothes. Moses run after the stone saying, Oh, my clothes! Oh, stone! My clothes! And Banu Israel had the chance to see the private parts of Moses. Are you, Dr. Tashkil, there? And you know, when the Muhammadan they speak about women, they are naked. Shall I take you to Imarat? Shall I take you to Bahrain? Shall I take you to Egypt? Uh, let us go in a journey. Hold on. I will make a short journey for Muslim conservative women in the Middle East. Only Middle East. I'm not going to go anywhere. Not to the night clubs in America who is full of Muslim women. But let us see here. The brother. Alhamdulillah. The brother. A brother, a brother. Oh, this one is overrated, so I cannot click on it. I have to to sign in. Obviously, there's something very bad there. And this one is the same. And those are two women in the top of each other, dancing in front of the men. Dancing in front of the men. Mashallah, Mashallah. Now let us go and see how the Muslims celebrate the birthday of Muhammad.
You want to see how to celebrate the birthday of Muhammad? Uh, let us show you. Oh, this is very dirty. We have to avoid those. Hold on. Uh, no. We can't even find one decent thing to put in the screen. Oh boy. That will shut down our channel if we play it. Hold on. Um. Oh, 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 oh. oh boy. Okay, uh, okay, well, this one is okay. This one is better. We uh, finally we found something it's okay to show. A uh, brother, this is Egypt, and this is how and what they do celebrating the birth of Muhammad. Alhamdulillah. And no, this one is even better. I know what's happening in there. I don't know. I don't want to play the video. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is nothing. I'm just trying to find the one is okay to, to play. Oh, boy. Man. Forget about all of this. I'm going to show you an Islamic Dawa TV station now. Brother, this is an Islamic TV station. I will put it for you on the screen. And I want you to tell me, is that a Muslim country? It's called Turkey. And this is a pure Islamic dawah. The, the first one who come with Islam and science and Quran and science is Harun Yahya. So don't tell me you don't accept what Harun Yahya is doing. Hold on, hold on. Actually, when I watch this, this, uh, those videos, it make me uh, like feel dep de de depressed. I mean, look at uh, look at the one who joined my videos and the one who joined this guy in person, not in videos. I mean, it is not fair. Okay, hold on. Uh, let's see. This one is very dirty. Yeah. Okay, this is better. No, this is very bad. But I don't know which one to choose for you guys. I don't know. All of you are under age. I mean, all of you are like 18 something. Especially girls here. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Oh, let, us, let us watch this one. But without the music. Wow. Islamic TV station. Alhamdulillah. Praise be to Allah. I mean, this is a program, not my program. If I have those girls, imagine how many Muslims they will join my program. Look at this. One after one. This is the Muslim Turkey, and this is Islamic TV station, and this is Harun Yahya. Oh, we are now, the house become a nightclub. That's, that's deep. I'm going to say Shahada. And look how long the skirt is. 
One after one. I mean, that's really good. Oh boy. I mean, hold on, hold on. I want to compare those to my admins. Look at my admin. Look, I have Sheikh Omad. How in the world I made Sheikh Omad an admin? This is the girl should be an admin here. I mean, do you see how I feel guilty? Which one he deserved really to be an admin in here? Sheikh Omad with his beard or this girl? And she is a Muslim girl dancing for Allah. Do you know how many Muslims she can bring me if I if I made her an admin? If somebody know how to contact her, please. Wow, that's something. No, okay. Oh, okay. I like. Uh, I think this is leather made from pork, because it's not haram to lose leather of pork, Mister Doctor Tashkiri said. And now the scholar is dancing. The sheikh himself is dancing with them. Alhamdulillah. Where is the guy who says your women walk naked? You go go and see your religion, my friend. Go and see your, your countries. Go check in England who is the one doing prostitution. Go check. In all of Europe. Anyway, we don't want to go we want to go down low with those people. But this is what they say to you. They accuse you of what they have. Your prophet is the first prostitute. And by the way, there's a video in YouTube. In Suku film. Go watch it. Three Muslim discussing. And the title is, Look like Allah approve us to work as pimp. And why they say that? It's in the Quran. You have a license. They said, Allah give us a license to work as a pimp. And the video is there. Three well-known Muslims. The Quran never forbid prostitution. In fact, he made it legal. All what the Quran saying, force them not. But if you force them, it's okay. Not a single verse in the Quran against prostitution. It's encouraged prostitution. Chapter 24, verse number 33. Do you see it? Only in Christian countries, men they have a surgery by to be women and give birth. Well, obviously those are not Christians who do that, my friend. But what if I show you now a Muslim he wanna give birth? Because the one who did that is Muslims. Here we go. I will show you. I saw many articles of them. Many Muslim refugees, when they come to Europe, the first thing they want to change their gender. Oh. Let us see. I will show you even Islamic fatwas. It is. It says it's okay. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> oh, let us see here. You can search it. I mean, there's many. Uh, uh, but I, I found I, I, uh, there's a guy recently. Uh, he even asking European, thank you for paying for my surgery. The Iranian changing their gender. Okay, I see. I'm trying just to find what is the correct words to search in Google. Okay, let's see. 
I guess I'm using the wrong and there is Muslim halal sex toys Well, I found some websites, but there's the one I'm looking for is not there really. I am a Muslim, and my gender doesn't fit me. Changing then gender names in Islam between reasons. Changing gender is etc. Uh, yeah, I mean, go and search and see how many uh, uh, in Iran. Here we go. Let us see. It is legal to change your gender in Islamic countries. And this is what since, this is in the newest since 2013. Fatwa allows sex change in Iran. And those are Muslim who became females. Anyway, I mean, eh, eh, stupid Muslims, they say things, you know. Uh, first of all, you know, for us, Europe, America is a free land. And you want to know what Muslims they do, and what they can do, and what they will do, give them freedom. And that's why if you go to Europe, you will see who is the one who do everything wrong. If we go check right now, what is the percentage of Muslims in Europe, in France? You will see the percentage is way more than the number of Muslims. That is telling you the news. And if we go in YouTube, actually, why well, want to go to YouTube? I just remember something more important. This is your caliphate. If you have my book, by the way, you will see that Muhammad is a gay. His uncles are gays. All the all the Muslims in in Mecca are gays. And every house have a gay, and I can show it to you from here, from the hadith. I want to go to YouTube. Look at this. Caliphate Uthman, he approved a homosexual to be the, the, the imam. All those hadith about gays inside Muslim houses. Every house have a gay, including the prophet house. And you're a prophet, he used to dress women in clothing, and he used to do eyeliner, and he used to be like a woman, and he kissed men down their belly, and he used to lick men, and he used to suck the tongues of boys. Let us continue. Here we will find the story. Here we go. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, so a Muslim cannot say, we don't accept it. A Muslim man, he come to the Caliphate, Uthman, and he said to him, well, we have a homosexual who is leading the prayer. Read it. I went to Uthman ibn Affan while he was assigned. So now he became the Caliphate. I said to him, you are the chief of all Muslims in general, and you see what uh, uh, fell in, befell into you. We are led in Salat by a leader of Al-Fitna. Between two brackets, fitna, what fitna mean? Trial, affliction, etc. And we are afraid being sinful in following him. Uthman, he says, well, salat, uh, prayer, is the best of the deeds. So do the good deeds, you know, and avoid the bad ones. Uh, and avoid those who do bad deeds. As Zuri said, in our opinion, a man should not, a Muslim should not, offer Salat behind a feminine person unless there is no alternative. And this is Sahih Bukhari. But look what happened here. This person is a homosexual. The Caliphate approved him. But the Muslim they are claiming they are, they are being tempted by this homosexual ass. That means all of them they are homosexual. Because how he become a leader of fitna 
trials and affliction, etc. How, how they are getting tempted? Can you tell me? Those are your people. And this is your religion. Why the Muslims, like Uthman, he have a big ass, you know? And he looks, he look, you know, whatever he look, he bent over in front of the Muslim. Muslim, they get tempted. Why the Muslim get tempted by a homosexual ass unless all of them, they are homosexual? I mean, you see the guy who is complaining? Why he's complaining? Because they are afraid he is going to tempt them. But you tell me how you are being tempted by a man when you are a man. And not to forget, there's a hadith where an Uthman himself was killed. One of the Muslim companion of the Prophet companion, he says, if I know who killed Uthman, I'm going to if him. And this is in Shia Pan website. The translation is there. I do not need to waste my time to translate to you. If I know who killed Uthman, I will if him. A Muslim homosexual, he heard that. And he said, if I know who killed Uthman, Sorry, he said, I killed Uthman. The Sahabi, the companion of Muhammad, he made him bend over and he started ifing him. The guy, the homosexual, underneath of him, he was screaming, saying, if I know that this is the penalty of killing Uthman, I would love to kill Uthman every day. Go read it. This was the punishment of the one who killed Uthman. You Muslim ifed him. Are you there, Dr. Tashkir? And your prophet dress women clothing, and your prophet put eyeliner, and your prophet piss like a woman, and your prophet he kiss men down their belly, down their stomach. And your prophet take off his t-shirt so a man he can kiss him there. And the man he said to him, Oh prophet, don't stop. This is how I like it. And then you are talking about homosexual. Go, go and see what you have in your countries. Just go. And this is the hadith about your prophet kissing a man and man kissing him. Where? Down his belly. And what the man he says? Oh, don't stop. Yeah, don't, 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 don't stop. Okay, right there. Allahu Akbar, takbir. Do you see it? Abu Abdul Rahman, he said, blah, 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 while he was giving, suggesting, and he was talking to people and make them laugh. The prophet poked him under the ribs with his stick. What the heck? He said, let me take retaliation. He said, okay, take retaliation. He said, you are wearing a shirt and I am not. The prophet said, the prophet, he raised up his shirt. Are you there, Muhammad? Abdul Tashkil? The guy he want to do to him as the prophet did to him. He have an objection. Hold on. You are wearing your shirt. I'm not wearing shirt. This is not fair. And then he, and so Muhammad, he left up his shirt, showing his nipples like me, hijab. And the man embraced him and began to kiss his side. Then he said, this is what I wanted. Messenger of Allah. Kissing where? Are you there, Dr. Tashkir? Why the prophet raising up his shirt and why the man is kissing man down his belly? Speaking with joy, saying, this is what I wanted. And not to forget that in the heaven of Allah, you Muslims, you will be homosexual. Isn't it your God, he said, that in the heaven, there is a market which no buying nor selling in it, except pictures of men and women?
Can you show the proof behind this? No, my friend, I cannot go behind this because this will be a homosexual act. I mean, guys, we show them the reference and then they say, can you show us the proof behind this? You go behind. You are the Muslim. Can you show us the proof behind this? Don't talk about behind. Enough is enough. Huh? Now, did your prophet promise you that in heaven there is a market of images, of pictures, of men and women? And then, if you like the image of the man or the woman, you enter it and you have sex with it? Are you going to say to me, can you show me in behind this? You stay in the behind business. Here we go. The Messenger of Allah, he said, in paradise there is a market which nothing is brought or sold except images of men and women. If the man like the image, he enter it, so he can have sex with it. Do you see it? Pictures of what? Of men and women. Do you see it? Praise be to Allah. Allah will give us images of men and women in heaven, brother. There is a six magazine, a Playboy magazine. You go to the market, you have to pay for it, brother. It's not for free. I thought heaven is for free. No, brother. It says, indeed, in paradise, there's a market which there's no buying nor selling except, which means there's buying and selling, but only for one product. What is that six magazine? And what is in the images is men. Daif is invalid, prove it. Who said it's Daif? Who said it's invalid? This is you today saying that. Secondly, Daif is not invalid. And this is why it is in Jami'a al-Turmudi. Jami'a al-Turmudi is one of the six Sahih books. So are you saying to me that you Muslims, you lie about your prophet? Okay, let's go to the Quran. What about the Quran? You will say to me the Quran is a Daif too? The Quran promise you, little boys who will never bleed. Bleed from what? Are you there? Translation saying, they will not get it drunk. The Arabic says, Wala yunzifun. They will not bleed. But even if we go with this translation, Allah, He promised you in heaven 80,000 little boy, and they are so white. What they are doing with you? Drinking? According to the translation here, they are drinking with you. So, what is your joy? Women and boys. Those boys are Jekalo. Are you there? Can you refute me? Eighty thousand boys, and Allah He promised you that your penis will never go limp. Supposedly, I finished my broadcast an hour ago. And he promised you again, a penis will never go limp. And look, look how Muhammad, he deceived people by saying to them, Allah will make you so rich. Yeah. <laughs> uh. 
Let us see here. The chapter, what has been related about the bounties and there are the lowest inhabitants of paradise. What the lowest inhabitants of paradise they will get in heaven of Islam? The least people in paradise is the one with 80,000 servants, they are boys, and 72 wives. This is Muhammad. And your penis will never go limp. Don't forget that too. All right, look like we are done today. And I don't see the admin, Lisa, who, I don't know. We took her name by mistake from the admin. Look like it. And I didn't see her to add her. She have to make some text so I can add her again. Anyway, it's up to her. Maybe she don't want to be admin no more. Anyway, I want to say thank you guys for being here. I hope we have a good time. Uh, I was planning to make a short video, but look like the mission is impossible. However, when you download my videos, you can make them short, like one about the time, the days, like in the beginning, uh, about uh, we do not know when the flood of Noah, Muslims lying, uh, the Big Bang, uh, the day is a period, six period, right? You can divide them. Uh, Uh, Dr. Tashkil, my friend, I, I laugh at you because when the Quran says they are pearls, it's talking about how they look like. For your God, Allah, is racist. No black people allowed in the heaven of Allah. Secondly, when you say they are like pearls, you say they are pure. What pearl have to do with the pure? It says, Lu'lu'un maknoon. Lu'lu is very white. Maknoon is preserved inside the shell. And this is exactly what your prophet says about the women. They will be jailed inside their tents. So you are a silly again. And even if there is no sex, what kind of God he promised you 80,000 little boys in heaven as a slaves? Where is justice? Slavery in the heaven of Allah. Wine in the heaven of Allah. Sex in the heaven of Allah. Whatever you desire in the heaven of Allah. So you, a man, he can if you. He promised you whatever he desire. And then you try to defend it. We laugh at you. Why a God, he will, cannot make you happy without having 80,000 little boys in your house. They are not your children. They are there to make you happy. What they will do exactly? If the Quran says that whatever you wish you will have, if you wish to have a bird fly in the sky, he will be cooked in your in front of you. So what the servant for? The trees will go down to you. So what the servant for? Your clothes and your body will never get dirty or wrinkles. So what the servant for? Which means there's no laundry, there's no cooking, there's no, there's nothing, and you don't do poo poo. So what the servant for? This is an answer. You need to find yourself and laugh at your religion. Obviously, this man is obsessed with slavery and abuse. And he don't enjoy anything except abuse. The same as he said about abusing children. If you remember the hadith where it says, when he asked Jabir, about marrying a child. Actually, there's a hadith about this thing. You know, you remember we mentioned many times that the prophet, he says, you play with her. In fact, this is not an accurate word. The prophet, he said, li'abuha or li'abiha. Li'abiha is putting your mouth, your tongue inside her mouth and sucking her saliva. You see, they lie in the translation. وَلِعَابِهَا Not to play with her. لِعَاب is saliva. And just to show you how Muslim they lie in their translation. You see here, there's no saliva, correct? 
Does it say anywhere saliva or licking? No. The same hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. The same words. Look at the translation. When I got married, Allah Messenger said to me, what type of lady you have married? I replied, I have a married to a merchant. He said, why don't you have the liking for virgin? For found in them. Found in them. What found in them? What found in mean? Is that liking or licking? Lihabuha is licking. Do you see it, Muslims? Hmm? This is not liking. In Arabic here it says her saliva to suck her saliva. This is not about playing. And what kind of a prophet he advise a man to go and have sex with a child in order he, he suck her saliva? And that how, how that is amusing you? Very sick person. Found in, I don't know what found in mean in English. Found in, what found in mean? Let me try translator. This is a new word for me. Uh, yeah, like touching them sexually, I see translation here saying. I mean, uh, a man he is married and he is asking him to go after a little child so he can play with her and suck her tongue. And, you know, very filthy person, molesting. Yeah, this is how faithy this man is. Uh, anyway, I think we have enough for today. And again, please, those who download my videos, cut them pieces. They are long. And people, they will not be able to watch them this long videos. Otherwise, I have to force my videos to get shorter. And if you like me to come back as soon as you like, then help us to get us more people watching the videos. So I can see that my work is not a waste of time. Trust me, I don't like this topic. I hate it. I don't enjoy it. But somebody have to clean the garbage. As simple as that. Our Christian churches are not doing their job. Your children, they can be misleaded so easy. More and more liars and deceivers exist in the internet. And you do not know, and your children do not know. And your priest, you do not know. So who knows? Especially these days, we have a priest who they are liars, doing business, like Muhammad. They are perfectly correct. And this is why I'm warning you. Don't go to a church. The priests and that the church teach that Islam is Abrahamic religion. Don't. For this is not a church no more. This is a satanic cult. If the Bible itself said to the Jews, and they are Jews, and they worship Elohim, if Jesus, he said to them, evil generation, hypocrite, 
Fibers. How in the world a priest he will say to you that Muslims worship the same God? How? The black stone kissing religion. If they have the same God, then their God should have the same nature. Allah is not a spirit. Our God is a spirit. Allah does not have a son. Our God have a son. Our God is the Father. Their God is not the Father. Our God is a Trinity. Their God is not. Our heaven is holy. Their heaven is sixth and fifth. If we have the same God, we will have the same nature of God, the same ethic, and the same holy house of God. Muhammad even, people used to come inside his, in, in his side, his mosque, in his time. And even dogs. And Muhammad never cleaned the mosque. Do you remember Jesus, what he did? Just because people are buying and selling in the house of God. Actually, they are not even in the house. They are out of the first and the second and third yard, outside. He flipped their tables. He was so angry of their behavior. He said to them, you made the house of my father a bazaar. This is the faith in Muhammad. Dogs go inside the mosque, lift up their leg, and piss in the mosque. And the mosque was a small room. And Muhammad, neither the Muslim, they clean the urine of the dogs. Do you see it? And this is Sahih al-Bukhari. How their God can be our God. The Kaaba is a place where people used to go naked around it, totally naked. How that can be the house of our God. A person who come to kill the Christians, to kill the Jews, how he can be following God. Why your priests are lying to you? Because they are the priests of the devil. This is why the Bible says, the Lord, he says, be aware of false teachers. They will come to you in a clothes of a sheep, but they are wolves. And the Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And our fruits is to love the Muslims, not to hate them. But we will not love Satan. Aka Muhammad, Aka Allah. So if your priest is politically correct, he is the priest of the word. That is the word of the devil. He is not a priest of God. Remember that. I want to say thank you for being here. And uh, uh, feel free to subscribe to our Patreon. And I know many of you don't care to support us. It's okay. The Lord is our provider. We cannot complain. Uh, we give our books for free. We do our work for free. And for free we took. For free we give. But remember, the Lord, He gave His blood. And it's not for free. It was with suffering. He washed our feet. It wasn't for free. When I say it wasn't for free, I don't mean he got paid for it. But it was with a lot of suffering. So Jesus, you might think he gave you everything for free, but in fact it was not. The price was so big. He come to this filthy earth. That alone is a suffering. He spoke to the filthy people. That alone is a suffering. 
He was humiliated by the filth of a human being. That's a lot of suffering. He was taken to the cross. And then a Christian person, he says to you, I receive everything for free. The fact it's not really for free. The price was so high. For free you took, for free you give. This is what happened to us. But in reality, it was not really free. Being on the cross is not something you can say it happened for free. So we pray that the Muslim will see the truth and the truth will set them free. We pray that the Christians, they will understand. We pray that people who are listening, they will not consider everything is coming to them for free, even if people give it to you for free. When somebody, he sits with you, teaching you for many hours, this is from his health, from his life, which you cannot bring back, and not to mention the danger. But you receive it in your side for free. So if you appreciate, at least download the videos. If you appreciate, at least save your children, teach them so they will not be blind. If you appreciate, share with your church. For Christians are unaware. And look how small the number of people are watching. A woman, she make a video wearing short skirt. Tens of thousands, they watch the video in less than 24 hours. We burn our blood, our life, to share the truth. And then we end with a few thousand views. The world is disgusting. And reality is ugly. But... It's better to light a candle, better than complain about darkness. And wherever light exists, darkness is not. And the light of Christ is going to be always with us. This is why he said, I am the way. I am the door. I am the truth. I am the life. And yet the Muhammadan, they will say to you, where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. So our Lord is the truth. He is the life. And when the truth and the life join together, that is God. That is God. For the power of life is God power. And the power of the truth is God power. And God himself is the life and the power. The Bible says everything was created by him and for him. That is Jesus. Thank you, God bless you, and we see you soon again. Take care. But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan 
urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 